So as you heard, I'm Rohan Mahimkar, co-founder and co-CEO of Prodigy, and I'm going to tell you the story of how we got 25 million kids to love math and share a few key lessons along the way. So I'm going to start off by asking, how many of you here have heard of tutoring programs like Kumon or Sylvan Learning Centers? Yeah, quite a lot of you. So when I was growing up, my mom had forced me into one of these programs. And that was basically me uh, on the slide as a kid when I was growing up. No, I wasn't white. I didn't do a reverse Michael Jackson. Um, but I still do remember the experience of coming home with a stack of math problems like that thick every night, having to go through pages and pages of these, and absolutely hating that process. At the very same time, I was addicted to a video game called Pokemon, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with too. So when my co-founder Alex and I got to the University of Waterloo, we said, why do these two things have to be such disparate experiences? Why can't learning math be as engaging if not even as addictive as a Pokemon-style video game. So we built Prodigy. Prodigy is essentially a RPG-style video game, kind of like Pokemon, that covers the entire grade one to eight math curriculum in Canada and the United States. But as engineering students, we knew absolutely nothing about the education market. And as Kevin O'Leary pointed out on Dragon's Den, this is a market that means, makes grown men cry. And after he said that, they zoomed into our face and we looked pretty somber there. Um, so what we did after we graduated is we spent about a year and a half going into two private schools, Mentor College and Ridley College, and we were there almost every single day testing with kids and teachers and figuring out what they wanted from our product. And we learned a number of things here, and this was our first big lesson. Working with teachers and students allowed us to achieve product market fit very early. So for example, we found out that even private schools wouldn't pay for our product, so we switched our business model to a freemium model and where we could get a lot of adoption without making schools pay. We learned that teachers had to teach the Ontario math standards, so we aligned all of our content and all of our reporting to the Ontario math standards. And then finally, we realized that a lot of kids have a variety of devices, from 20-year-old computers like desktops in schools to iPads at home. So we rebuilt our entire game in HTML5 when a lot of other people were going towards native apps. And this has given us a huge advantage in terms of growth. So we officially launched Prodigy in January of 2013 with about 3,000 students in Ontario, and over the next year grew to about 130,000 students. And we kept growing after that. So we have currently over 25 million students that are registered on Prodigy. But this growth really hasn't been easy. So for example, for that first year, what my co-founder Alex and I did was we essentially split the province in half. We're based in Burlington, so I took everything east, he took everything west, and we literally drove to different schools and school boards and tried to get the product into them. And that has taught us a big lesson because that strategy hasn't worked all the way through. In order to achieve our next order of magnitude of growth, we've had to overhaul our sales strategy several times. So I remember the exact moment that that sales strategy didn't work. I was uh, doing a presentation to the York Catholic District School Board. I'd worked for like six months to get into this presentation. We'd close the school board. You know, there were like a good 20,000 kids coming onto the product. And I got to my car after that and checked our stats. And that day we had onboarded about 2,000 new students just organically onto the program. And I remember that feeling of accomplishment sinking away and a feeling of almost regret coming upon me saying, hey, I've kind of wasted my time here. I need to be in the office figuring out how to increase our organic growth rate in order to get more leverage. And we've done this a number of times with our sales strategy as well after that. So for example, when we entered the United States to get to that market, we did an initial seeding strategy where we attended a bunch of conferences and we used some Facebook ads to get the first teachers in new geographies. And after that, we essentially relied on those teachers to spread the word to others within their school and to neighboring schools. And now that we've got a majority of the early market and we're moving to the late majority, we're actually re-implementing a sales process where we have people reaching out to districts and trying to close them to do a top-down strategy which supplements our kind of bottom-up strategy. And this hasn't just been the case for our sales strategy. We've also had to change things for our the way we build a team. Um, I'm going to skip 
beyond this just in the interest of time. And I'm going to go to what's next. So I want to tell you a story here um, just to illustrate where we're going after this. I was at a conference about a year ago, and uh, there was this parent that ran up to me. He was with another vendor at the conference. And he said, oh my god, you're Prodigy. Let me show you something. And he essentially logged on to his parent dashboard on my computer, and his child, who was in kindergarten, had gone through our grade one curriculum, two, three, and was working halfway through our grade four curriculum. This was because this child just loved the game, and he spent a good two, three hours every night playing by himself. And his dad had helped him out as well. And kind of our long-term mission as a company comes down to taking that experience that that one child had and scaling it to every child in his school, every child in the country, every school essentially in the world. So that's where we want to go. Um, we are currently, within the next year, trying to get to all of the 28 million 5 to 13 year olds, that's grade 1 to 8, in the United States. And beyond that, there are other opportunities. So we've already started expanding into the UK and Australia, but there are countries like China and India, which have 120 million and 150 million kids in our age range, respectively. So that's a lot of potential kids to help, and we can magnify that impact beyond just North America. So my shameless pitch to you is we're growing really quickly. Um, if this mission appeals to you, feel free to join us, prodigygame.com slash jobs. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Questions? If you're aligned with the Ontario curriculum, what does that look like with your growth for like going to the rest of the world, the United States? Do you change it based on where you go or? Yeah, so we've had to integrate specific curricula for each new geography. Um, we got really lucky doing math because like math is math anywhere in the world, right? Regardless of if you're here or in Indonesia, you still have to learn fractions. So it's a matter of just reordering the curriculum, but it would be a lot more difficult once we go to other subjects. I'm wondering about uh, how the prodigy is uh, helping the Chinese students to learn the mathematics. It's uh, through the games? We don't help Chinese students as yet, but that is where we want to go. Oh, sorry. Hi, I think uh, that's a pretty good product. Um, one thing that was going through my mind was that if you have you know, 25 million students jacked into your software, and you have, um, like you're saying, the one kid who just is being, uh, you know, he's obsessed and he's, he's an exceptional talent. Do you see your software as a way to identify these exceptionally talented students that, you know, otherwise maybe they would just sit in their class and nobody would really know about it? Yeah, we actually have had a lot of teachers tell us that. Um, and so anecdotally, we have heard cases where teachers who thought kids were, so for example, there was uh, one classroom that I'd worked with really early on. There was a child on the ASD spectrum, but she was actually super advanced in math, and no one realized that until she kind of got on the program. Um, but more broadly, what we're trying to do is get everyone to excel in math, because it's, it's a foundational skill that I think everyone can get good at. Hi there. Simple question. Oh. Do you guys have different game modes because different kids learn at different paces? So for example, if a kid doesn't understand a topic, is there such a thing that math becomes easy mode or medium mode or mode or hard mode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we actually ex um, adapt based on a child's individual learning path. So in the background, what that we do without the kids realizing is if they're struggling within a certain skill, like multiplying by fives, we'll pull them back to a prerequisite skill, like counting up by fives. And in that way, they'll be able to build the prerequisites in order to get kind of the, uh, the skill that they're having difficulty with. Yeah, we adapt, basically. Last question. Hi. How do you compete with other companies like IXL or I don't know, Khan Academies? They're not in the same market, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of other companies in this market. Um, we have. Two big advantages. Number one is 
we essentially have the most engaging game out of any of them. Um, none of them have gone to quite game-based learning, which is what we do really well. So uh, number one, kids like us. And the second big one is we have a freemium business model, which means that schools can adopt our product without paying a single dollar. And that's pretty powerful in getting teachers to kind of sign on. Thank you. Thank you.